Hello Magic Community on YouTube, T1 Glistrov here. I'm going to be doing commentary for the finals of the Untap Open Vintage League Season 4. So we're looking at, on the bottom, that is Viper Fang 4. And Viper is rocking Karn Stacks, or Karn Shenanigans. It, it's Karn Shops, there we go. Uh, versus on the top we have Dank Confidant with Snapcaster Control. And both of these players have mull to 6. And... Dank is mulling to 5, and if you're wondering why they're mulling like this, they're not doing the London Mulligan, that's because, because this tournament got started before the London Mulligan was introduced, uh, was instituted permanently, they're still rocking the old Mulligan rule. Uh, and so, we're seeing uh, 6 versus 5 here, that's a... Uh, whew! Yeah, Library of Alexandria, when you have 5 cards in hand, uh, you're good to go. Hey, there we go. There we go. So I will try to remember to put the, and don't let me forget, commenters, I will try to put their original starting seven uh, in the description because that came up uh, before I had actually started the intro, but I was recording. So I can actually look back and see that. So we see uh, turn one, Mox Emerald and Thespian Stage. And to, because, oh no, Inventor's Fair, not Thespian Stage, Inventor's Fair, sorry about that. And uh, Sphere of Resistance. Yay, good times. No response, alright. Now that said, we'll still see a good bit of mana come out, well I say a good bit, we'll still see spin one mana into a Mox, a Mox Ruby. That's fun, I guess. And we're about to have Force of Will pitch Mental Misstep. Mental Misstep doing, you know, nothing in this matchup except... You can pitch it to force, and it counters Voltaic Key times three, and the one in the sideboard, Mana Vault, Soul Ring. That's it. That's really all it does. So, passing right along. <laughs> yeah, Viper said that's a force check, and, you know, that's fair. Oh, speaking of force, though, so let's see, that's an ancient tomb, but Lodestone unfortunately can't show up quite yet. That said, we can get a 1 1 Walking Blista. Oh, uh, this game's drink brought to you by Waterloo Sparkling Water. Completely not sponsored. I don't even know why I said that, actually. Waterloo, sponsor me, please. Alright. Yep. So, X equals 1. This game also brought to you by coffee, but it is entirely too hot up here right now, so I'm gonna let that cool down for a little while first. <laughs> seems important, seems legit. Alright. And this is not being streamed, this is being recorded and then going up later. Just... just in case that matters. Alright, so let's see. The lands that... Uh, we see a strip mine, we see a volcanic island... Hmm... So this is an interesting choice. Alright, so good, we're doing the preordain first. I agree with that. Alright, and for those that don't know, this is the first good cantrip that you can play in Vintage that isn't restricted. Ancestral Recall is of course restricted, Brainstorm is restricted, Ponder is restricted, Gitaxian Probe is restricted. <laughs> and so you have to go all the way down to the level of Preordain before we get to that. If you're wondering about deck list, I did not have enough time to get them pulled up before we started, so I, I do apologize for that. Uh, they will, however, be in the description below, so go check that out, please. Um, yeah, so here we, here we have it. We have, uh, what's that? Oh, is that? Oh, that's a Blast Zone in Vintage. I dig it. Now, Blast Zone, because it comes in with a charge counter, never hits zero, but, you know, that's fine. Alright, so what are we doing? Gee, it's, it's pretty obvious what we're doing here. It's a Lodestone Golem, and that's going to draw a force. Force pitch misstep, as you do. Paying the one off the ruby. Uh, Viper shook it. As quick as that was, it may have been something that still needed, that still uh, would have been gotten. I don't know. Alright, but we got there, so... Ta-da! And that is a Daze, which, uh... That's not a particularly great card in this spot, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Now that said, when the next Ballista comes down... Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, one. So if this blist is played on two, Daze will actually do something. That'll be a thing. Well, actually, you just fire it now. Fire it at the tomb now. You know, 
ends up, unless there's a top deck land, it ends up being the same logic. It also makes it where Ballista can't add any counters to it yet. Which would allow a, a way to play around counter magic. I already have the board established, therefore I'll just make my one dude bigger. The, each, each player has access to the other player's deck list, so they're playing with that kind of perfect information too. Which changes the meta pretty considerably. I had to think about how I wanted to build my deck knowing that before we even started the game, my opponent was going to have access to my deck list. Uh, and it, it does change your logic a bit. Hello? Hello, thank you. Alright, cool. Professionalism! Yeah! Alright. So, looking for another Ballista. Don't daze me, bro. The three mana daze. Do it. Do it. It's not going to do much for the rest of the game anyway, so you might as well do it. Hey, right, there we go. And days. I, I don't personally like days very much in the context of this format because it's a, it's a fast mana format, and getting your opponent to a spot where they're not going to be able to pay the one is difficult when Moxen, when Black Lotus, uh, when Ancient Tomb, Mishra's Workshop, etc., our actual cards when they show up. So we're gonna cycle a time walk here. This is maybe just going to be an explore, but you know, what are you gonna do? And since there's a snapcaster in hand, if we can get up to enough mana, we'll be in okay shape, but remember each of those are getting taxed by one, so that's six mana to be able to do both. Uh, there's polluted delta. As much as you wouldn't like to run the Snapcaster out just to hit the Ballista, um, I think that I can see a case to be made. I don't necessarily agree with this, but I think I can see a case to be made for running the Snapcaster early to block a Ballista. And the reason for that is if you wait for your opponent to get 4 mana, then they're going to be able to start adding counters, and then a Snapcaster won't kill it. There's a Voltaic Key. And, uh... Voltaic Key, you, you see Voltaic Key in Venture's Fair, and you might think, well, okay, if given enough time, that's basically the game, right? Because they can sack the Inventor's Fair to go and get Time Vault. Well, no, because the Time Vault is in the sideboard, because this is a Karn deck. You only get one Time Vault, period, so better to have four Karns that can find your Time Vault than to just have one Time Vault. At least that's the idea. Alright, so there's Treasure Cruise, which, let's do a, a quick price check here. There's five, well, okay, so it's effectively six. Six in the yard, one, two, three, because of sphere. And that would leave you with time walk still in the yard. And that's probably fine. So we're, that's what we're doing here. We're fetching, getting a land, and remember we can get rid of one, two, three, four, five. It, maybe it changes if you'd like to keep preordain, but when you have time walk snapcaster, that's the much, much easier pick. Uh, so, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 for a treasure cruise. Then we can go cruising for a bruising. I will never get tired of saying that. I'm sorry. Alright. Shoutouts to Library of Alexandria. Sometimes that card is just absolutely bonkers. And it needs to be restricted, but sometimes... Mmm, sometimes it's just so bad. Alright, so there's our treasure cruise. I uh, did not expect the time walk to be pit, to be ditched. So I was incorrect about that. Um, that said, there's a sword, so we still got something we could use for Snapcaster. That's a thing. Yeah, Snapcaster sword, it's a little bit awkward against the walking ballista, but, I mean, because you're still going to take damage. Uh, but it's fine, it's fine. Especially in this case, because you can sword one of them, you can use swords on one of them, snapcaster swords, and then the last one will kill your snapcaster. Uh, unfortunately. I, I do like the idea of keeping the time walk in the yard, but... Fair enough, that's just me. Alright. And there's, uh, there's a land. 
There's the land. There's good old Mishra's workshop. Ooh. It is hot. It is hot in here. I can't turn on the fans because then they'll mess with the audio, so I'm sorry about that, YouTube. I mean, I guess I could just take off my shirt real quick now. <laughs> Alright. We'll be slightly more professional than that. Just a little, just teeny tiny little bit. Alright. Hey, we have a response from Dank. So, end of turn. I assume this is, yeah, this is end of turn. They're still tapped. There are some cases, especially in Legacy, when you might want to do it on upkeep so that you have the maximum amount of mana to fight over like a stifle, but I think amongst everybody in the whole field this season, there were zero copies of stifle submitted, at least as far as I'm aware. So we're doing an end of turn swords here. Cool. And then fire it. Alright. Even though the Mishra's Workshop can't be used to actually add counters to Ballista, better to do it now, I suppose. Better to do it sooner rather than later. Uh, although, come to think of it, at that point, weren't they hellbent? So you didn't expect anything to come out of hand, so you should do it before combat, maybe, to save yourself a point? Oh, well. Alright, so yet another, yet another fetch land. We're going to build up into that Snapcaster treasure cruise as quickly as possible, apparently. Alright. And since the preordain wasn't kept either, you don't get Snapcaster preordain. Uh. To be fair, Time Walk, had it been left, might have just ended up being a cycle spell. Uh, just an explore. Blue explore. Go from two explorers to blue explorers. It would be two explorers with Snapcaster, actually. That's right. Hmm. Jeez, Jay. Yeah. That guy's banned for life now, isn't he? Isn't Alex Burton Cheney banned for life? For like three separate instances, three separate bannings. All right, so we're seeing a ca yeah now now it's now it's happening. So Academy, Inventor's Fair, Sack Inventor's Fair. Uh, this card is bonkers. <laughs> it's a very technical magic term, bonkers. <sighs> All right, and we're moving into Fair. Hey, there we go. Crucible. Oh, Crucible. Now, so far we've seen Inventor's Fair, Ancient Tomb. So, we could get to a state where we go, yeah, and there we have it, where we can go Inventor's Fair, get a bunch of stuff out of our deck, like just repeatedly get stuff out of our deck. Uh, that would be, that would be cool. Ooh, fun. Alright. Uh, well, the Lodestone Golem's already gone. So, take in one. And next turn, we're going to start actually making that walking ballista a bit of a big boy. Big boy ballista. Let's go. There, oh, <laughs> the greatest thief in the multiverse gets to show up. Now, if the greatest thief in the multiverse comes and takes something, which, of course, he will, then immediately walking ballista is going to kill him. Unfortunately. Uh, still, I think that there's a very strong case to be made for taking the Crucible of Worlds, partially to deny your opponent the Inventor's Fair shenanigans, partially because you can't take the Ballista, they'll just shoot in response, and you get to play your fetch lands over and over and over, and oh yeah, we. Granted, the life total's getting low, that's certainly fair. Um, but we are talking about having the ability to. Uh, thin your deck a lot, build up that treasure cruise, and you've got Snapcaster treasure cruise online before too long. I mean, look at how much mana we already have here to work with. Uh, since the opponent's hellbent, you don't really have a need to take the key right now. The key doesn't actually net any mana. Uh, by the way, it's Voltaic key instead of Manifold key because when decks were created, Manifold key was not a card yet. So, if you're wondering why, that's why. Um, yeah, there we go. Oof! Oof, 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 o
Good times. Good times. By the way, I'm debating what I'm going to play in the next vintage season. By the time this video goes up, I'll have already made up my mind. And I've gotten it down to either Infect or a particular version of Oath that's piqued my interest. So, I don't, I don't actually know. On the one hand, Infect is kind of my baby. On the other hand, I've played two seasons with it. And, you know, it's, it's gotten me in top eight both times. But I'd like to play something else. I don't get to play, you know, in an actual vintage tournament too often, so I would like to get another shot at it at some point. Okay, so, uh, did not shoot the Dak Faden yet. And I imagine that's because A, we can just attack it, B, we have Academy to add a counter. C, is that a soul ring? That's a soul ring. Okay, well, eh, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. <laughs> oh, fun. That means that on future turns, you'll actually be able to net mana with uh, Voltaic Key. Tap 2, pay 1 to untap it, tap 2. Uh, not that we have anything to spend it on right now, except Ballista and Crucible, as I recall, I believe is just a 1-of in this list. Uh, this is more of a stacked style of Karn deck, hence, you know, Crucible Worlds in the main board. That's, that's not especially common. Um, and there's also, I should note, there's an Ensnaring Bridge in the deck, so we could... Ensnaring Bridge is not great in this matchup, though, to be fair. Alright, so to see what we have going on over here, if it will... Hello, there we go. Hello. Hmm. Oh, this looks beautiful at full screen. Alright. So let's see. What all are we doing? We also could start build if we don't add counters to Walking Ballista, we could start building into Blast Zone. Um, which Yeah, go for it. Okay, so we're we're signifying that we're adding a counter. Right, should be adding let's see. Two counters? Because we did the Soul Ring trick. Let's see, one, two, one. 2, 3, and then add 5 because of Academy. Should be 2 counters, right? Uh, yep, there we go. We got there. We got there, folks. Alright. Took us a sec, but we made it. We did it! Alright, now another thing that I should note is that this is best of 5, this is Worlds format, so, uh, going at face, it seems. Mm, that's fair enough. Uh, what that means is that we're going to see main board games uh, for the first two, and then we go to sideboard. Uh, shooting one at Dak. There we go. Okay. What happened? Did we go to face and then shoot Dak? Alright, there we go. Cool. Okay, so six is the life total after the attack. That makes sense. That makes sense. Alright, so that Snapcaster Sword is looking little juicy now. We've got to we've got to hurry and the opponent is on you know, they're hellbent. So Viper is hellbent. There's not a whole lot of a reason not to try to do it now in my estimation. It does take a card out of your graveyard unfortunately. And this Snapcaster is going to die. Uh, but that's okay. It's going to die and you're going to take one. So you're going to be at 5 after this. Uh, target plow. Cool as you do. Okay. Okay, I, I get it in this context. I, I normally abhor when people just use text the letter K, but in this context, it's fair. It's faster. We're trying not to bog us down too much. So we're firing one off at it, and then the other at the face. Hello. That was neat. I have a ghost here. I think we're ready. Now it's not warm enough. Of course. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not home yet, but this is what the Snapcaster control deck is meant to do. That's... Oh, hey, that's a card. That's a card and a half. Okay, that's a, that's a fun thing to do. Let's play that out, I guess. Revoker, gee, I wonder what we're naming Mox Ruby. It could be anything, Mox Ruby.
Oh, Dak. Ooh, okay. That's fair. Now, again, I, I don't have access to their deck list right now. I don't know how many copies of Dak are in the deck, but I would imagine it's at least two. At least two. In fact, let me see if I can pull it up really quickly. I'm going to do my best, and apologies for that, uh, while I pull this up. All right. So that's interesting. I, I don't dislike naming that. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Uh, there is a treasure cruise in the yard, so you know if they have another Snapcaster, that's... Oh, right on time, Forcible. Right on time. All right. So what would you like to play out of your yard? Still got a land. You still have a land. You have two fetches you can do and go to three. Ooh. All right, so really quickly, pulling up, pulling up that list. That's, uh, that's not the right one. Hey, there you are. Okay, so the answer to the question, how many Dak Fadens are there? It's three. And I'll, I'll see if I can pull up the deck list really quickly. But yeah, it's three Dak Fadens. And, um, and, uh, apologize. I will not sing, I promise. Hello? Hello? Well, fine, let's go off full screen then, I guess. <laughs> Oh, hello. Hey, there we go. So that should give it to it. Hey, we got there. There it is. We'll see it in just a moment. If it's if you're watching on YouTube, here, I'll, I'll tell you what. Here's what I'll do. Here's what I'll do. I'll do... Oh my goodness. There we go. I will scooch right here. Oh my god. What is going on? Alright, I'll let you pause for a sec. Pause, take your time, enjoy, and now we're back. And in the meantime, I'll pull up the other list. I'll pull up Viper's list. Hey, got there. Professionalism. I apologize. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It's probably going to default to paper anyway because, you know, me, I guess. Hey, we got there. Once again, let me... Give you a sec to take a look, pause if you need, and et voila. All right, cool. So those are the list, and we'll have some time in between games to actually do a deep dive. Uh, but... <sighs> oh my goodness. I'm having to <laughs> use energy to cool myself down, though. That doesn't seem like it's going to work. All right, so Dank is still thinking. All right, all right, I imagine, I strongly suspect. That, oh, wait a minute, okay. Wait, wait, Swords is still in the graveyard? Was Swords not fired at the Ballista? Oh, okay, fair enough, I guess. That, that kind of works. Remember that this is, I guess, in anticipation of there not being another Snapcaster in hand so that the Treasure Cruise wouldn't matter. All right, one, two, three. Snapcaster. Let's go. Let's go. One, two, three. Two, three, four. All right. And now we start dump. Ooh, excuse me, dumping. Five, six, seven. Okay. All right. So one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Did we not... Am I missing something? How many cards were just exiled? Okay, maybe I just missed some of the cards being exiled. Okay, cool. That's That makes sense. Alright, and then draw three. Oh, look! High Lightning Bolt we can't cast right... Well... Have we played a land yet? Is that what this was? If we haven't played a land yet, we can bolt to get rid of the Revoker. Otherwise, we're going to have to throw this poor Snapcaster Mage under the bus because we're at entirely too low of a life total for that. Unfortunately. It's just how it is. Now there's a dig through time in the deck too. Other win cons in the deck. 
I guess in the context of context of this deck, Dak is a win con. Take one of their creatures, for instance. Uh, but it's Snapcaster, Monastery Mentor, and Jace Friends Prodigy, three Snapcaster Mages. Narset's not really a win con. Dak's not usually a win con. Um, and that's that's about it. So it's it's what you expect. Snapcaster control. That said, it got to the finals for a reason. For a really good reason, too. Whew! I do declare. I do declare. I'm from the south, I can say that. Alright. So, passing right along. No attack. Interesting. All right, there's Preordain, can we not? <laughs> All right, let's see what we get. I'm regretting grabbing Crucible. Yeah, uh, I mean, you couldn't have known. You couldn't have known. Dak Faden is a three of, but you couldn't have known. It made sense at the time. Stop me at any time if needed. So alternatives, if the Crucible had not been gotten, so Lodestone Golem was already out of the deck. It had already been taken out and, and countered. It's in the yard now. Other things that could have been gotten, um, I it's, since there's already a Voltaic Key, you don't have to get that. Uh, Ensnaring Bridge, probably. Ensnaring Bridge seems like it'd be a little good here. Just a little bit. Uh, that said, uh, as you can see, the deck can still win through Ensnaring Bridge. Uh, there is a Jace Friends Prodigy up there. And, uh, you know, that, that matters. <laughs> Alright. It does make it especially hard, though. In Staring Bridge, does make does make it a good bit harder. Especially in mainboard games, where there's no uh, Echoing Truth, or something like that. Fragmentize. Pyroblast to, to work with Dax Emblem. Things like that. Shattering Spree. Yeah, you get the idea. I can't counter anything, and the only two things I can do involve Blast Zone and Wasteland. Oh, Vi Viper, I understand. I, I understand you're a... Uh... Dank, Dank is fine in, in asking the question, is there anything you'd like to do? Does it resolve? I cannot envision exactly what you plan to do. That's that's fair. It, it's I, I don't mean to sound rude, Viper. It is a it is a normal enough question though. It's a fair enough question. Um. So yeah, there's that. And I imagine that we're oh hello. Okay, we draw. All right. So yeah, double force is pretty good. Uh, show me Jace to try to just close this game out, maybe? Wait, hello? Okay, okay, we got there. We got there, folks. We had a more optimal tapping of our mana. Oh my goodness, what is going on? <laughs> Alright. Yeah, swinging first. That's fair enough. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. So, blast zone shenanigan time. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So, not playing the Jace makes sense if you're looking at blast zone. That makes good sense, I would say. At this point, I don't think that Dank Confidant really has much to worry about. So you can wait until blast zone goes off. If it goes off, then the Jace is cleared. And if it doesn't go off, you still have a Snapcaster Mage. And it, they can't really play a threat to stop it because you have Force of Will times 40. So it seems. Alright. Passing turn right back along. Uh, there's a Narset. That's pretty good. That's definitely a thing. Not that it does much to actually hate out Dank. There's not a lot of card draw going on on Dank's side. I mean, excuse me, Viper side, but it's a two for one. Gives you two cards with some selection. 
That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Alright. Hi, Nyarset. I'm a little curious about tapping a Valk instead of a Ruby, but eh, oh well. Alright, so we're activating Narset. Nyarset. Viper's good with that. Cool. If we get enough cards in hand, we might see Viper throw the Wasteland at the library. Because as bad it well, I mean, there is a Crucible. There is a Crucible. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately Wasteland kind of has its work cut out for it right now. Hmm. Oi, oi, oi. Okay. So while we're debating... I don't really know what to do to fill the to fill the air here. I need a co-commentator, someone to bounce off of. Um, but what I will tell you is that this video is brought to you by gratuitous amounts of caffeine. Approximately all of the caffeine. This is why. All right. So cool. Uh, Oh, okay, we're revealing Forcible in that way. That's that's fair enough. That makes sense. So we do have a moment of vulnerability with Forcible. Not that it matters because a land was drawn, but if it happened not to work here, then it would have to be Force Pitch Force. Or Force Pitch Jace, but eh. No, <laughs> let's not. That seems like a, a bad idea. Blast Zone on 2, getting some work done. Maybe. So there's Black Lotus, and now, by my count, we have seven cards in hand. So, activate library. Yep, there we go. Hey, got there. Drawing a card. See what we get. You know, one mana Black Lotus. Oh, Dak Faden, Dak Faden. That is quite a card. If we'd like to maintain mana for Force of Will as well. We can pop the Black Lotus here, pay one, no, 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 because then we still wouldn't have enough for Sphere. That's unfortunate. We'd have five mana, but because of Sphere, that wouldn't be enough. Um, we could just swing, and I, I'm fine with that. That's alright. That is more than alright. If you're wondering why lands weren't played, this is part of the reason why. Library is part of the reason why. Another is look at the life total. Okay, so we're, we're... Huh? Okay, nani? Alright, so I, I like the, the, the cat here for Dank. Shout out to your little kitty. Alright, yeah, this is a spot. You know, you could also use Narset, but only if you plan on playing a land or playing Dak. I suppose. Alright, we're just gonna do it now. Dak now. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Draw two, discard two. Let's do it. Alright, so that blast zone has a choice. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Now, I imagine that this is a debate about Blast Zone? Hmm. Merchant Scroll, which I b believe is restricted in the format, if I'm not mistaken. Merchant Scroll. I would not swear by it, so don't quote me, unfortunately, but I think Merchant Scroll is indeed restricted. It, it gets way too much good stuff. As much as I like it in the context of something like High Tide, shoutouts to Feline Longmore, shoutouts to Matthias Hunt for that matter, for also being a High Tide pilot, um, it's, it's Ancestral Recall. <laughs> that's, that, that's actually where it's at. Merchant Scroll, one for ones, and then you play Ancestral Recall as a nice little glorious three for one. Alright, I'm gonna switch pose here real quick. Ooh, is that a Brainstorm? That is Brainstorm. 
a an extremely literal brainstorm. Alright, so we're doing this first. That's fair enough. Alright, going to 13. Um, presumably activate library now. No, no, oh, no, okay, we're gonna get a little bit of selection in first. I like the idea of doing library first so that you have more cards from which to pick. Since all of these actually look kind of good. <laughs> kind of good. They look very good, actually. They look exceedingly good. Ooh. Like, even the merchant scroll to get... How many Force of Wills have already been used prior to this? One. Alright, so there's no need to even go for more Force of Wills, but dear god. <laughs> yeah, um... This game, folks... This game is pretty well locked up. This is what Snapcaster Control does. It's, it's a, it, it's a boa constrictor. It just slowly wraps around you until it's got you and you can't escape. And on that terribly morbid note, where we're seeing the Merchant Scroll, and we're about to find out what it actually. Oh no! Oh, oh, oh. Okay, dig now. I dig it. Ah, uh, ah, uh, alright. So let's see. What are we getting? What are we getting? So much card draw. Now, it's not actually a concern, but notice how many cards are left in Dank's deck. It's only 22 versus 40. Obviously, there's a lot more card draw going through there, and deck thinning too, for that matter. Um, that is a Mox, one mana Mox Jet. And, um, a Ponder. Okay. So we can play the Mox, go back to seven cards, have Library up. Heck, I mean, if we have to discard something, <laughs> with that many cantrips, I think we're alright. I think we'll live. No, 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 tap the island! Tap the island! Why? Okay. All right. This is game one, folks. This is game one. Uno. My bad. Oh, it happens. I actually... Oh, there we go. Thought there were eight in hand. Uh, I thought for a brief moment there were, right? Six, then add two, there were eight. Huh. Alright. So let's see. Passing it right on back. How about that Narset? We, ha we hadn't even used this Narset the second time. That's pretty crazy. This, this matchup, dang. Alright, change turn phase. Well, I mean, I guess you could get that Blast Zone up to Emrakul killing range pretty soon. There is that. Oh, we're gonna take our soul, take the Soul Ring. <laughs> Make room. I like it. I like it. As someone who normally plays lands in back, but on this program plays lands in front. Look, look at, uh, this is, this is a sight. This is a sight to behold. I appreciate that Viper has not conceded yet. Um, yes, yeah, Sinister, I agree. What a board. Uh, Viper once, once when we were playing, uh, actually in our last game, uh, said, I got you. This was in game three, and he was up 2-0. He said, I got you. And I said, I'm not conceding yet, because I, I still had an out, and lo and behold, I hit that out. All right, so there's Karn. Uh, is anyone here willing to bet what uh what the likelihood of Karn showing up is gonna be. Actually resolving with a force of will in hand. I'm gonna guess negative nothing. Not too likely. Alright, so targeting ooh, targeting you. So draw two, discard two. Interesting. Alright, let's see. I honestly don't even dislike taking the monolith, but 
it doesn't really matter. Huh. Oh, because of Narset! 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 Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Interesting. I had actually forgotten that Narset was there. It's so weird to see Narset not do anything for a while. That makes sense. Okay, so Narset puts up a handy little rule. If you're watching this video, you probably know this interaction, but for anyone who doesn't, each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. Well, lo and behold, you know, Dak Faden says, target player draws two, then discards two. So you draw one, then discard two. And that means full discard. I did not realize that could target me. Yeah, um, that's, that's fair. It's, it's like Ancestral Recall. Technically, you can target anyone with it. It's an interesting little <laughs> interaction. And this is Dak Faden Narset. Yeah, uh, that's a thing. Uh, yeah, with Force of Will in hand, too. Yeah, not much you can do, unfortunately. You were probably dead nine turns ago. I'm gonna give my little... My little quote here. You win 0% of the games where you concede. I am a firm believer in that. And I'm obviously not the first person to, to say something to that effect. I think Reed Duke helped to popularize something to that, uh, something to that effect. If I'm not mistaken, the only time I've ever seen Reed Duke concede was very, very early in the game when his opponent playing Delver and Legacy disrupted him but didn't see what he was on. And so instead of actually playing any cards from his hand, he played like a Wooded Foothills. Which, when it's Reed Duke, you think it might be Jund, right? Maybe, because it's Reed Duke. He's very in tune with his Jund side. Uh, but, lo and behold, it was Elves. And he actually got his Delver opponent in Game 2, maybe in part because of that. Because one player got to sideboard and the other didn't. Uh, that said, spoiler alert, Rough and Tumble is a rough card <laughs> for Elves. So, whew, Game 3 was a little tougher. Shouts to Reed Duke. The SCG circuit is the most like anime section of MTG. I think a lot of that has to do with commentators. A lot of that has to do with the culture. It feels a little in between the the sanitized formal esports side of Magic and the grassroots, almost like FGC side. Uh, so we're seeing a, a Black Lotus right off. All right, so that's a that's a that's a black lotus too. <laughs> oh hi, oh hi, that's a black lotus ancestral recall. Only six cards, but that's a that's a pretty handy six. That's a pretty handy six. Oof. Okay, I can see this going a number of ways, but I personally am a strong believer in. Well, let's see what, what the draw is, but probably turn one misty recall. Then Black Lotus Mox Narset. Oh wait, we have we have stuff to do. Gonna get that Karn out. Get that sexy Karn out. Whew. Yeah, it's pretty clear there's no force now. Yeah, turn one Karn. That's a thing, folks. Turn one Karn is a thing. Um Yeah, I think he gets it, Viper. I think he gets it. Uh, so, unfortunately, now that uh, Karn has done his thing, now Karn happens to have the oft-overlooked, but eternally relevant in this format, Null Rod. At one-sided Null Rod on him. And that means that what I just said about Black Lotus Mox is not going to be a thing. We're going to see uh, Turn 1 Ancestral Recall, and hopefully... Now, th this is interesting. The Time Vault was not gotten yet. Oh, and we're spending the one, the, the one that was floating. If we can find... Oh, so Gitaxian Probe first. Just draw your card. See what you got. With the rest, it's just lands, as you do. Uh, if we can find a Force of Will and stop the Time Vault, Karn is a lot less scary. Uh, still scary. Still other ways that Karn can win come the sideboard, because 
Come sideboard, we still have Worm Coil Engine, we have Batter Skull, which is probably, I would imagine, what we go for here, since Source to Plowshares is a card. Um, yeah, that, that's it. We're, that's what we're going for. If somehow we find Force here. Oh, but never mind, there's a... Ooh, okay, there's a Lightning Bolt. I like that. Just just do it. Throw it out there so you can play your, your Black Lotus and your Mox. Just, just do it. Just do it! That, that is a top deck, folks. That is, that is a top deck. Top decks of glory. Alright, so now that that's out of the way, uh, once again, uh, Dank gets to play Magic too, and whew, does he? Alright. So once again, this is a Pearl, and this is a Lotus. So we can go Ancestral Narset, and since we only see lands from the other side, I actually firmly agree with, uh, believe that that's what should be done. Uh, just Black Lotus make blue, Ancestral, Pearl, Narset, do it. And of course there's a library. <laughs> of course the, ooh. Ooh. Okay. This is an abundance of caution. With two lands in hand, I, I can't say that I agree with doing that, to be honest. Um, I guess that the idea is that we don't want to have to pop our Black Lotus now. If we can help it, we'd rather not pop Black Lotus. And you know, that's more than fair. Um, I can get behind that. <sighs> Alright, I know what you're thinking about. I know what you're thinking about. Yeah, hmm. That's, that's not too bad of a card to have to deal with for Snapcaster Control. It's not a deck that features like a Paradoxical Storm Kill or something like that. It can, it can live through a sphere. Alright, so yay for another land. One, two. Ancestral Recall. Let's go. Target player draws three cards. Alright. Alright, Merchant Scroll, once you've already, uh, once you've already used the Ancestral Recall. Still good. Still a good card. <laughs> They're in there for a reason, for sure. And we do have a Fetch Land, so never mind. Never mind. What are we doing here? Hmm. 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 Are we going to treasure cruise now? I mean, so we would have six cards in the yard because of Black Lotus, plus Black Lotus made three, and that's exactly all you need. I mean, sure. Go for it. Go for it. Alright, Dank. What you got going on? What the heck? Okay. Well, that's fair. <laughs> just having a day, folks. I'm just having a day. Alright, so Merchant Scroll. What? Okay, we, we converted Black Lotus into a Merchant Scroll. I wasn't expecting that, but that helps the treasure cruise more. Fair enough, I guess. Let's see what we're getting. Force of Will, of course we are. Of course we're getting Force of Will. Yeah, uh, Viper, oof, oof. Don't draw land. Whatever you do, don't draw land, please. You need to not draw a land, buddy. I speak to you from the future. That is not a land. That's okay. Uh, that said, when you already know about the Force of Will, there's not much you can do. I think... <sighs> do you have to just run the Karn out? Knowing it's going to get countered, but at least you'll get a two for one? Or is there some... Oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, no, 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 you don't. You have Inventor's Fair. So you can sack the Inventor's Fair and... Oh, but then what do you get? 
Karn Black Lotus. Oh, oh, um, hmm. Decisions, decisions. This is where I would want to be in... I, I imagine Viper knows the deck way better than I do and can actually answer that. But Inventor's Fair into, what, Ensnaring Bridge? To try to bait out the Force of Will? Maybe? But, hmm. <sighs> like, I, I would imagine that when you have Karn in your hand like that, what you're trying to do is bait the opponent into using counter magic on whatever else first so that you can get the Karn to resolve. Especially since you only need the Karn to resolve and then the Time Vault and you're good, you're set, you're golden, that's it. I would imagine. Alright, there's our Blast Zone doing its work. Into Inventor's Fair. Cool. We're doing it now. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Okay. Oh, that breeze. There's a breeze going through here, and it's so great. It's so great. Alright, what you gonna get? What you gonna get? One tiny sad little drop. Put you out of your misery, bud. See, you're wanted. You're wanted. Okay, there's Crucible. That makes that makes some sense. We're going to try the same thing that we went for last game. Wait, wait, wait. Oh no. What are you doing? This isn't being cast. Don't don't show your hand now. Don't do it. What are you doing? Oh, oh no. Oh no. You just Oh no. Oh no. This goes to hand. There we go. Okay. This, I'm gonna say maybe there's some four-dimensional chess going on. Maybe. Maybe. So, okay. Best case scenario. Daze is probably the card you would want to pitch to Force of Will. Daze does very, very little in this matchup. Uh, especially under a sphere. It's just, I've been distracted here by family for a sec, my bad. Okay, that's fair. Um, so you can make your opponent wait for one longer, one more turn, wait until they have even more mana before they cast the Crucible, to try to stall. Maybe. And then, you, you don't use the Daze anyway. You use either the Spell Pierce or the Force of Will. So you, you get them either way. Maybe. If you have Daze, which counters it unless they pay one, and Spell Pierce, which counters it unless they pay two, you can get them to work around the Daze and not realize that they need to also work around the Spell Pierce, and you kind of get to have your cake and eat it too. So if there's some four-dimensional chess going on here, <laughs> that would be silly. That would be sick. All right. No. Spell Pierce. There we go. We got there. We did it. Oh my goodness! We did the four-dimensional thing. <laughs> All right, Dank. I, based on your comment, there's no way that was intentional, but there's an anime side of me that wants to say that that actually was. Yes, yeah, Spell Pierce targeting the only thing on the stack. This game is an anime. That's that's my excuse, and I'm sticking with it. And since I came in, what, either third or fourth for this tournament, let's see. Let's see. I lost to one of these two players, of course, and so I would think that the way that it would work, oh, it, we're doing it now, the way that it would work is, um, if I lose to the winner, I came in third, if I lose to the loser, I came in fourth. That makes sense. All right. Well... And then after this, I'm going to post our decks on uh, MTG Top 8, because this is the tournament. So this will already be up on MTG Top 8 by the time you're watching this. Shout out to MTG Top 8. Yeah. Uh, another 32-man tournament, which in Vintage, I mean, that's, that's kind of huge. 
you don't you don't typically see tournaments that big. the biggest tournament I've ever run for vintage like an actual tournament I think was 12 people I think just a like an unsanctioned thing at the the game store just hey everybody come out and play I have decks you can borrow or make your own deck we got 12 people out that was a thing that was fun it's casual but you know it works yeah the uh, you can't see behind the camera is my my box my vintage gauntlet and it has a bunch of decks in it I'm actually reworking one of them today I'm reworking Drake's shout us to Drake's uh, or no, no, not, not Drake's Phoenixes. There's a Phoenix deck in there. And it runs Frantic Search, which is... Admittedly, on the one hand, it's really slow, but on the other hand, on the turn you cast it, you kind of just get to do all the things. It's a... It's careful study for three mana, but it has the untap up to three lands clause. So it's kind of like a, a Mana Morphos that lets you discard a couple cards, I guess. And it, it, mana Morphos in that it pays for itself. And there's a 4 mana Dak Faden. Just gonna get to do its thing. Taking the Mox Pearl. I mean, we do still have 1 mana open and Force of Will. So we're we're fine on that. And Days. We already know about the Days. So Force Pitch Days is still a thing. Uh, plus, if we take the Mox Pearl... Okay, that's an interesting way to do it. I, I like it. So we're seeing 1, 2, 3, 4 mana from, uh, from Viper here. If Viper top decks something other than an Ancient Tomb, and it can't be Black Lotus, Black Lotus is already gone, then it's actually counterable by the days, actually. Pay one for days. Goofed? Um, it, it happens, Viper. No worries. You couldn't have known. You couldn't have known. Uh, playing the, the Crucible end of the Spell Pierce? You couldn't have known, dude. It's alright. It happens. I have exactly zero room to speak. <laughs> I have exactly zero room to judge. I have a whole channel to prove uh, how many times I can goof. Thank goodness I decided not to put a punt counter on my games. Mm. Alright. Alright, so things that can be done from here. Let's see. We're going to put a chalice out on one. And that's fair. So the current contents of the graveyard include Ancestral Recall. So Snapcaster Ancestral is a thing. So running the chalice on one is a good little insurance policy against that. Plus you still have the, the rest of them. You still have Brainstorm, Ponder, Preordain. Uh, Getaxian Probe's already been played and, uh, and dumped into exile. Shout out to Getaxian Probe. This is the only format left where you can play Getaxian Probe other than like Commander and stuff like that. Uh, so let's see. We're, oh, we're forcing it. Interesting. Interesting. So there's our bait. So that means that if another land is found, uh, Karn actually will resolve going forward. Which is an if, but uh, that said, that's not going to happen, because we see on Dank's side there's a Narset in hand. So Narset, and then Dak Plus, and then Hellbent. And then it would take a top deck Karn the Great Creator, which can happen. Obviously the deck runs four, um, but that's the second one. So let's see how likely that is. So right now, 48 cards in deck, there will be 46 at that point, so it'll be a 2 in 46 chance. Alright. Whoa, 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 pay one? Unamas? Unamas? One more. Narset's three here. Narset's three mana. One more mana. Please. Please. For the love of God. Pay one more mana. <laughs> Dank, please. What are you doing? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh dear. Hey, I, I understand getting distracted by family. As much as I enjoy... Okay, okay. We got there, we got there. We, we paid the one. <laughs> we got there, folks. Alright, so, uh, Narset and Dak. Yeah. Yeah. Match made in Ravnica, but, uh, on that note, rest in peace, Dak Faden. Alright, so we didn't get our top deck we needed. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It was, uh, 2 and 47, because you only got to draw one card off of that. Mm -hmm. I swear, I can math. The assumptions leading to that number were correct. Somehow I messed up the number itself, though. Ah! Oh, well. All right. Well, there goes Dak, which, you know, there goes Dak into Here Comes Dak is true combo. That's a true combo, all right. Narsa is such a good card. Like, I, I honestly doubted this card, and I think that the reason I did is because, uh, well, for two reasons. One, I was looking at newer formats, like modern. Uh, but two, Narset doesn't, in and of herself, actually win you the game. But if you can't lose the game, you will eventually win the game. <laughs> I hear that's how that works. It's kind of like running Null Rod in the main deck for a lot of, uh, well, you used to be able to run Null Rod in Vintage a lot. Now we have Karn, which acts as an asymmetric Null Rod. Uh, time Walk. All right, fair enough. Show us another turn. Oh my goodness, actually. Time Walk into Snapcaster Time Walk into... Woo! I mean, good grief. It just I would imagine you'd... Oh, okay. I was thinking you might just play the deck now, but we're holding up Force just in case. All right. Oh no, we can't. We can't actually play the Phyrexian Revoker. Actually, we're yeah. Oh man. Oh man, Dank. Oh man, Viper. Hey, what am I saying about Dank? Viper's the one having to live with this. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Good times. End of turn. Should have ticked zone up. I'm still slightly ticked at the two of you, by the way. I said I would give me a moment to record my intro, and then they just go off. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. They're in a hurry. Pretty much dead here. Target recall. Okay, okay. Well, game three. So now they go to sideboards, and now I have a moment to go through all of this. So this is Dank's deck. It is, uh, so win conditions first, I suppose. Jace Friends Prodigy into Jace Telepath Unbound. Fair enough. Snapcaster Mage, but our big one is Monastery Mentor, which ever since that mulligan we haven't actually seen yet. So let's, uh, it'll, it'll show up in, invariably, right? So Dak Faden, while not technically a win con, can take artifacts that can win you the game and keeps you from losing. Narset, similarly, is there to find stuff for you and keeps you from losing. Also combos with Dak Faden, as we saw, brilliantly. Uh, and then as for all of this, this is, this is means to the end. Lots and lots of card draw, lots of interaction. Uh, importantly, so two lightning bolts. Uh, that said, lots more removal coming in from the side. And the mountain is coming in too, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So we have Black Lotus, the set of Moxon, so the same as mine, and this is what you expect. Despite being a Jeskai deck, it can still use Emerald and Jet just for the mana. Uh, there's plenty enough colorless mana uh, that it gets made, it gets use. And then only 16 lands, because again, lots of cantrips, and we have Moxon, so fast mana. A strip mine, but no wasteland. That's fair enough. Uh, for the sideboard, we see a mountain which comes in against the wasteland X. Uh, Fragmentize is a two of, for obvious reasons. Pyroblast probably do no, it doesn't come in. It does nothing in the matchup, but um, it's there, and it combos with Dak Faden. Uh, so shattering spree, Dak Faden's emblem specifically. Shattering spree also coming in, obviously. Rest in peace doesn't do enough in the matchup. Leyline same. Uh, Mindbreak Trap doesn't do enough here, so we see six cards that are definitely dedicated to uh, Graveyard Hate. Now it's Rest in Peace instead of Graft Digger's Cage, 
uh, because, well, one, Grafter's Cage can hurt your own Snapcaster Mages. Yes, Rest in Peace does the same too, but at least you'll have a window with, where you can, you know, do it before the Rest in Peace comes down, right? Whereas Grafter's Cage is a one-drop. You get it out sooner, uh, I suppose. And then Leyline of the Void uh, oh, oh, also plays around Chalice. Uh, or whatever. 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 Leyline, it's free. Um, so yeah, that makes a good bit of sense. This is a, a deck that can take a long time to win, but it can become inevitable pretty quickly. On the other side, we see a pretty stock, you know, this part is pretty stock. It's pretty well established. I'm going to check to make sure we're not... Yeah, we haven't started yet. Okay, cool. Uh, Walking Ballista as a 4 of. Phyrexian Invokers are 4 of, so uh, this is just a, a nice little colorless hate bear, and this deals with snapcasters, deals with my entire deck, it deals with it's just whatever you need it to, and it is a win condition unto itself. Lodestone Golem uh, is restricted for a reason. It's both very good uh, beats and it actually just locks the opponent down too. Karn Sign of Urza is not the, the big one. Karn is also able to make giant creatures, twice actually, uh, but you're really looking for Karn the Great Creator. This is the one that goes and gets some sideboard shenanigans, like the main one being Voltaic Key Time Vault. Both of those are in the sideboard, along with the keys in the main. Uh, you can also, you've got Graft Digger's Cage, uh, you've got Tormod's Crypt you, for Graveyard Hate, Sorcerer Spyglass, it uh, doesn't get dismembered, gets Ensnaring Bridge. There you go. So this is the Ensnaring Bridge I was on about earlier. Uh, there is not one in the main board, but there is in the side. Witchbane Orb, Batter Skull, Worm Coil Engine. Uh, as for the artifacts, it looks a little different than like a Ravager Shops list. You'll, you'll notice a few differences. Um, Voltaic Key is a 3 of, that's that's not the case normally. Grim Monolith, that's not the case normally. Uh, but otherwise, it looks pretty well the same. Crucible, take it or leave it, it's not always in. And it's definitely in here though. Ancient Tomb, the Blast Zone is good tech, I like it a lot, Viper. 3 Inventors Fair, 4 Mistress Workshop, a Strip Mine, an Academy, and three ways, or 4 Wastelands. So that's that's pretty good. And uh, that's that's what we're at. That's where we're on. That's what we're on about. And let's see. Give me a second. I need to take out the trash. Take one minute exactly. Well, in that case, you know what I think I'm going to do. Oh no, never mind. We have a little bit left. I should probably take the opportunity to get it now. But I think instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some water because it is 4,000 degrees. So that when the sparkling water runs out, I'll have some more water. So give me just a moment. Do 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 do. <laughs> Still here. Alright, so while we're still here, I guess. Um, let's see, anything else to talk about? So, Voltaic Key combos with the four Grim Monoliths and, of course, the one Mana Vault. Shoutouts to Mana Vault. Yeah, I, I love how they tried to fix Mana Vault by increasing the cost by one but taking out the one Mana Ping. Uh, folks, that was not enough. Alright, so sideboarding now. Cool. Cool, so, uh, shouldn't be too long. Shouldn't be too, 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 too long. So if I had to make any predictions, now, I've talked about what cards they'd be bringing in. Mountain, Fragmentize, Shattering Spree. Easy enough, right? That's seven cards, so what comes out? What comes out from the deck? So as much as we saw, you know, Narset, Dak, Faden take over, Narset doesn't actually do anything against the deck other than combo with Dak, Faden and find you cards. I can see a Narset maybe two being taken out. It is three mana, so I can see that one maybe going. In the context of this deck, I don't think there's a good play draw argument for taking out Cataxian Probe, but Probe is usually better on the play. Uh, with Viper going on the play here and Dank on the draw, maybe not. Now, Mental Misstep almost certainly is coming out, but let's look at the list for just a moment. So we see Mana Vault, we see Soul Ring, and we see three Voltaic Keys. It actually does something, albeit not much. I'm gonna check. It does something in the matchup. Oh, okay, and we're back. We're back. Alright, so we've already mulled the six for Viper. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, there's Karn Scion, though. We see uh, one, two, three. We got it. We can do a chalice on one or a sphere. We can do a chalice on zero and a sphere. Actually, hey, okay, okay. Yeah, no response. Cool, cool. Hello. 
Okay, that's interesting. So we can do a chalice on zero into a sphere this way. I mean, right now we have two mana up. We can also do a chalice on one, which I don't I don't dislike. There's there's actually a decent number of one drops. This is can't do much for Teleria, lol. Yeah, the Telerian Academy becomes Telerian Island for a little while. Gotta inject myself here. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, uh, that that means you get. To, ooh, okay. So putting it on zero. Ooh, okay, okay. Even with no zero drops in hand, that's where we're going. That is fair. That is certainly fair. And sphere. Okay. Yeah, um... I don't know what I think about that. About countering the chalice on zero. I, I don't think that I'm a huge fan of it. Especially since now you just represented, hey, I didn't have any zero drops in hand. Uh, if I did, I'd have cracked the Scalding Tarn to play them. Uh, and you two for one yourself to do that. I, I can't say that I'm a big fan of that, to be honest, but I'm not in the finals, so <laughs> take that for what it's worth. Now, okay, now credit where credit's due. If the Chalice resolved, then Academy would be making extra mana. And I suppose that the idea is, you know, if Chalice comes out, Chalice, Mox, and Tillerian Academy would be tapping for two, maybe you'd have to worry about something like a Trinosphere, uh, but you can just counter that. Like, maybe the idea was, I'm going to try to keep you from powering up your Tillerian Academy, uh, which is exactly what's about to happen right now, Good old Karn Scion of Urza shows up to the party. And it's it, it can make a 3-3. That's not bad. Make a 4-4 next turn. That's not bad at all. Or we could go the other route and play the the long, the slow and steady game. Try to draw ourselves into stuff. I think that's a fine play as well. Alright, but it looks like we're going to make ourselves a Deuterino. It's a very technical magic term as well. A Deuterino. Cool. Alright, and uh, and that works. Welcome to Vintage, folks, where Karn Scion of Urza is in the in the finals. Gotta be really careful this water around the computer. What could go wrong? Alright, so fetch. Do a fragmentize just to slow the clock down a little bit. I guess that's a thing. Alright, yeah, fragmentize. Hitting the sphere. Makes sense. It's going to open up some more. Hopefully, anyway, it's going to open up some quicker plays. Now, when we look at Merchant Scroll, Merchant Scroll only gets blue instants, so we can't get something like Shattering Spree or another Fragmentize. Um, and there's no Hercules Recall in the list, actually. That, that is a little bit peculiar now that I, I look at it, but no Hercules Recall, no. That's, that's curious. This would, be, this would definitely be a scenario where you would be alright with finding a Hercules Recall. So we're about to see a swing for three here. You can also go Brainstorm, and then either Crack a Fetch, or use Merchant Scroll to force a Shuffle. That's not a bad idea either. I think that I'm much more in Camp, uh, use it to go get an, an Ancestral Recall or a Dig Through Time, but I could be wrong. So there's an Adventures Fair. Ooh, okay. Let's see. Alright. No response. This game is looking like it's getting out of hand, just a little bit. That that force is that force was harsh. Um, I'm sorry, Dank. I, I I don't I don't I think that was a misplay. All right, so taking four. All right, 
So let's see what we have going on first. We see a Brainstorm. That's fair enough, get a lot of looks at cards. None of which are great, unfortunately. None of these are what we'd be looking for. <laughs> Oof. Well, geez, that's lethal then, isn't it? Let me count again. So we have a Walking Blista on three. We have four. Let, let's assume no more artifacts. Four plus four, that's eight damage. Plus three, that's 11 damage. And then Walking Blista, and that's game, actually, yeah. Ooh, gotta watch those Force of Wills. That, uh... Force of Will is a skill-intensive magic card. Knowing when to go off is is pretty crucial, and forcing a Chalice on Zero when you don't have any Zero Drops in hand... Uh, I'm sorry, Dank. I'm sorry, that I... I want to see Game 5. You know what? I, I usually do, too. I do here as well. I do want to see Game 5. The more magic, the better. Gonna be hard, though, Viper. Good luck. Yeah, going up against this deck on the play. I mean, Stacks... Uh, Shops is going to have to be on the draw for two more games in order to win. I didn't read Chalice on zero. Oh, that's why. Oh. Maybe just looked at the... Lo looked at the available mana and thought it was a Chalice on one. Okay. Oh, God. Look at that hand. Look at that sexy, sexy hand. Yeah, um, there's a Black Lotus, so it's not... Okay, so there's a Black Lotus Ancestral Recall Time Walk. I honestly keep this hand. It sounds crazy. I do. Keep. Yeah, Dank is keeping. Okay, you could also just absolutely balls to the walls to try to uh, Monastery Mentor it. But no, let's not. Let's not say we didn't. Let's just, let's just play correctly, I suppose. Alright. So let's see. That card down there is a Time Vault in the main board? Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Alright, so this was my bad. Okay, this was my bad, folks. This is... I feel like an idiot. Alright. So, there's a Time Vault here. I have literally never seen this card sideboarded in. I assumed it was a mistake. It was apparently not a mistake. I tried to DM Viper about it. I accidentally didn't DM him. I put, him, I put the message in a chat that was publicly accessible that Viper was the last one that's, that commented in. I already deleted it. Hopefully that's not seen. Um, but I assumed, because I have... The point of this card being in the sideboard is that you can go and get it with Karn the Great Creator. I have never seen this in this being sided in. I have explicitly seen advice, do not sideboard this card in. So I assumed it was just a mistake. I assumed, hey, there was an accident when, when sideboarding or something or, like, this was brought in in a previous game and it, it didn't get put back out. Like, that there may have been a UI mistake. I... Well... Okay. Uh... Next turn. Alright. Well... I'm sorry, Viper. I'm sorry. I'm, uh... I thought, I thought there was a problem, and I ended up making it worse. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Oh, no. Alright. Well. <sighs> hopefully one of two things happens. Either Viper wins it anyway, because I don't want there to even be a possibility that Viper lost because I made a mistake. Or, Viper loses in such a way that it wouldn't have mattered. One of those two would be nice. And on that note, by the way, we saw Black Lotus into Ancestral Recall Time Walk. And did not draw another land. Well, I mean, we did. We drew Library. Library, if you're going to get stuck on a card, Library is kind of okay. Because 
you know, we're gonna, in upkeep, library, draw a card, and try to draw ourselves out of it. Oh my goodness. Sorry about going quiet for a minute. I... Uh, okay. So, Viper explained to me that one of the reasons that you might do that, one of the reasons you... Okay. Oh, that's brilliant, actually. Uh, using the force here is going to put uh, Dank off of seven cards. That, that actually really matters. Uh, and it's an excellent bait. All right, so we're going to fire the Wasteland off at Library. Which, you know, that, that should be it. That should be game. Um, I'm so glad. Okay, so Viper explained to me the reasoning behind it. Viper's list has three Inventor's Fairs. Uh, it's not uncommon to see Inventor's Fair in a shop's list, but or in a Karn list like this, but to see it as a three of, there's a reason for that. So it is sometimes slided in because while now you can't get it with Karn the Great Creator, you can get it with Inventor's Fair. So that makes that makes sense. Uh, all right, so that that's the reason why I'm. Hmm. 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 I should. Oh my goodness. What I should do is have some water. Should stay hydrated, folks. If you haven't had anything, this video has been going on long enough. If you haven't had something to drink, go get it now. Keep yourself nice and fresh. Water. W A T A. Water. I said it like water. All right. So cool. We got to land into. A preordain. Cool. Please no. <laughs> There's a breeze. It's knocking things over in my room. Uh, I'm still beating myself up about that. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Ah. One eternity later. Alright, so now we have that. Pass. Alright. Well, cool. Uh, unfortunately, that's a shattering spree with two targets. Hmm. I wonder where this is going. <sighs> do you just do it now? Just. Oh, this hurts. <gasps> you chose to waste my library. The top deck land and bolts in the match. Oh, oh, there wasn't. Now this is a sorcery, right? Shattering spray. Oh my goodness. Oh, and by the way, I just got a confirmation from Dank. Dank didn't read Chalice for zero. <laughs> It happens. No worries. It's like, it's like, so this is not being streamed. Thank goodness, by the way, this is not being streamed. This is being recorded and put up later. But that makes it all the more impressive that Dank could read my mind from the beach. All right. I haven't drawn a land after T1 recall and time walk. Oh, oh, okay, okay, what's going on here? Top deck land and bolts in the match, along with my eight land slash mocks in a row game one. Yeah, it it does happen. Um, 
One reason that I'm not a huge fan of playing shops, even though I, I personally believe it's the best deck in the format, is because it feels like you don't tend to have a lot of agency in the deck. There's not a lot of card draw, there's not a lot of card manipulation, and so you kind of just get what you get and, and hope that that gets you there. Granted, you're getting some of the most powerful cards in Magic's history, um, and some enablers for them, to be sure. Mishra's Workshop, Ancient Tomb. But at the same time, you are just... Sometimes you get this. Sometimes this happens. Whereas the, the Snapcaster deck gets to do all that. Ah, <sighs> okay. Yeah. 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 Oh my goodness. Hmm. Man. You, you don't like to see this, unfortunately. This is... This is kind of wrong. So, instead of rubbing it in, the Shattering Spree is still being held in hand. Um, which is fine. It, it's... It's alright. You can wait to get more value by hitting something that comes off of the next land that's played, perhaps. Um, you do have to wor watch that a little bit because if it's Ancient Tomb, especially now that you see the Monolith. Ancient Tomb, Monolith, Tap Monolith, Untap Monolith, Tap Monolith, Karn, and you can't deal with the Karn directly. So, I think I can see... Oh, God. Well... No, we're doing it now. We're doing it now. That's fair. And maybe because that exact line was seen. <sighs> Folks. Folks. That looks like it's about to do it. Now, we could still keep playing if we find a Mishra's Workshop off the top. That would be a thing. Uh, Mishra's Workshop. Oh, okay. Into what? Monolith Float 1. Into Revoker Time Vault, maybe? Revoker Sphere. There's one. We'll play it out. Alright. Man. man, oh man. Ooh, and that's... That's a wrap. That's a wrap. So, it does not appear to be the case, from what I've seen, that Dank saw the, uh, the message. It does not appear to be the case. Oh, I'm going to put a little GG's, GG's message here. Good games to both of you. Oh... <laughs> Try to take one of your places, one of your places, next time. I'll patiently wait to hear your puns. Oh, dang, you know me entirely too well. Alright, yeah, that's, uh, that's a wrap for that. Snapcaster. There were, by the way, 32 decks were submitted to this. If I'm not mistaken, and I'll check just to make sure, but I think I remember the number being 17. 17 decks with at least one copy of Karn the Great Creator. Yeah, so it was a Karn meta, which makes it a little bit surprising to me that the Snapcaster me uh, deck, which doesn't have any Hercules recalls, doesn't have any energy fluxes, ended up actually doing it. That said, Fragmentize is a card, Shattering Spree is also a card. <laughs> Alright, thanks to C2 for being present. Less than three. Aw, C in Discord, people. Alright, well, that's gonna be it for me, I'm, I guess. Take care, Magic Community, and I will see you all later. Bye-bye.